Oh, and the clowns, oh, and the clowns, oh, and the clowns go marching in. I wanna be in their number when the clowns go marching in. Hey everyone, how is it going? It is me, your good friend, Sir Tooney Van Dukes, and it is day three of Clown Week. So yeah, we are uh, planning a whole week of activities related to clowning around. If you were watching my video the other day, I had the history of Clown Week. Yesterday, I had the Tramp Hobo Clown makeup with a makeup demonstration and a history of the Hobo character clown. And today, I have on my Auguste Clown makeup, and I'm going to talk about makeup design and finding your clown face. So when I got started, a lot of people recommended one book, and that is Struder's Complete Guide to Clown Makeup by Jim Roberts. This was the first book on clowning that I purchased, and I thought it was a very valuable purchase. And it has information on a variety of clown faces, and it has pictures! Yes! Less words, more pictures! So it talks about uh, working with grease paint. That is the type of makeup clowns will use, how to apply it, uh, and it has different ideas on sort of designing different parts of the face. So those are a bunch of shapes that you could choose for your clown mouth. There are pictures of, let's see, eyebrow designs that you can use for your clown. And the back of the book has lots of pictures of real clowns and how they look in their makeup. So you can get some inspiration for the makeup design. Now, there are several tutorials on YouTube on, on working with grease paint and creating clown makeup. On my channel, I've created a few videos. I have videos of my friends doing their clown makeup, and uh, there's a playlist of other clowns who I respect demonstrating how they did their clown makeup. Now, this is considered an Auguste clown makeup, and I was looking up wh where did this word Auguste come from? Well, they, there's a few possibilities of the origin, but they believe it came from a German slang word for idiot or buffoon. So yeah, just uh, a clown is a goofy character. A lot of early clowns were a physical comedian, so they would fall and drop things and have accidents. So yeah, that was sort of a buffoon and idiot. I mean, oh, don't you know how to walk? You just keep on tripping your own self. You can't even sit down in a chair without falling to the ground. So if that's the true origin of the name Auguste, we don't really know, but that is one theory. So the different types of clown, one is a white face clown and the white face clown everywhere would be white except for the colored spots. Those would still be in colors. Uh, then there is the Auguste makeup, so it's a, the Auguste Usually the mouth area, which a lot of clowns will refer to as the muzzle, that is white. And then there is white around the eyes. The amount of white, the size of the white, the shape of the white will depend on your style. And the rest of your face beyond the makeup is a flesh tone. Originally it was a, a goose color, and this was a, sort of the color that it was. It's a little bit orangey pinky. It's a darker color than uh, a person's skin and nowadays a lot of clowns go with a more natural closer to their color. But I've seen clowns use a pink color, an orange color, a blue color. Yeah, you could do any color that you want. 
um, and just be creative. But part of finding your clown face is is learning to work with the grease paint makeup. Uh, I know the first time I tried to do grease paint, I did it by myself in my house, and I had no idea what I was doing, if I was putting on too much, too little, like, how thick should it go, what should I be doing? So the, the first real training experience I had with clown makeup was in a makeup lab for a class called Clowning 101. And they had uh, 15, 20 people all learning clown makeup, and the instructors were like, take a scoop of makeup, put it on your hand, rub it around, and smear it on your face, and they would help us figure out if we had on too much, too little, need more, and how to even out the makeup. Uh, some of it is like, in order to get smooth lines and designs on your face, there's some hand-eye coordination and just practice with the brushwork. I know when I was like 10 years old, I went to a program at the park district where we did a clown face and I wanted to do a big star design on each eye and the instructor who was helping us was like, a star has very hard points. It's, it's a hard shape to do to get looking right. Let's try for something simpler. Let's go with a triangle or some other shape instead of trying to get a star. Yeah, because complexity of designs is difficult. And I know like people sometimes like they want like a little curly cue or some other design. I have good eyesight. I need reading glasses for like reading papers and books and recipes on print, but I can see from a distance a mirror or a computer screen without without wearing glasses. So it's like if your eyesight is bad, your hand motion is bad, you're going to have a harder time with fine details of your makeup. So you should choose a simpler design that works with you and your abilities. Yeah, when I started doing clown, the first clown that came to my mind was Bozo the Clown from Bozo's show or Ronald McDonald. And they both have these big red mouths. And you see, I don't have a big red mouth. Uh, I only paint the lower lip of my mouth and I have the two extensions. A lot of clowns will call these extensions pips. So just another term that you might hear a clown talking about is the pips. Those are those extensions, uh, circles, or other shapes on the two sides of your mouth. So mouth, most clowns, unless you're going with a kissy face, um, you're just going to paint your lower lip. If you can do the kissy face, you do the upper lip and that nice um, shape. You like you maybe do it like a heart shaped or something. Yeah, another thing is like when I started. Um, I was doing the white smaller and there's a crease line on my face here and I was ending the white at that crease and sometimes when I smile the the line the where the, the white ends would get lost in the crease so I said okay avoid putting any makeup ending on a crease and I have to worry about my forehead that where I draw the eyebrows that I'm not in a crease because when I raise my eyebrows, if it's in one of these folds, you'll lose the sight of the eyebrow. But like the clown makeup is is your your is your non-verbal communication method of talking to your audience, so they can see your face from the distance. If you, <gasps> Woo, ah! so it's like your your face is going to exaggerate your expressions. So I like looking in the mirror and like. Just start seeing the effect of raising my eyebrows. Where, where is the motion? Where do you see it? So it's like having the eyeshadow here. I think helps you see the eyes raising up and down, and like the mouth. It it always sort of has a smile, but I can still turn. Get like that frowned sad look I, it's not like too extreme and I'm, I'm thinking about the focus area of the audience in front of me 
So I'm trying to keep my mouth in the focus area confined to a uh, fixed space. So say I don't want my mouth to go ear to ear because that's going to be too hard for a person in front of me to look. So it's like try to keep everything in the makeup design between your eyes so that that is what people can focus in on. It's not too big of a design. It doesn't wrap around all the way to you side of your face so it's sort of about finding your face how it works how you smile and sort of coming up with what works for you so to me as a new clown you have two skills to learn one is just the makeup application techniques of creating the face and powdering it and setting it so that it's not going to go anywhere. And the other one is actually the design and placement, the size, the shape of the designs. And I know when I started, I needed to work off a picture. Uh, the first time I did a makeup, I liked, I took a picture of it and then before doing the makeup, the next time I would stare at the picture that I had done and sort of say, okay, I put blue there and the eyebrows were this way and the mouth was that way and okay I think I got it so it's like uh, if you've been watching my videos almost every day my makeup design has some kind of a 3x5 card index card with a picture of a face on it that I've just drawn in color pencils just to sort of give an idea of here's a makeup design that I might try so it's okay it's got some uh, black eyebrows there's nothing that raises up like my current one does and the muzzle sort of goes down from the nose and up instead of this one that comes from the eye so I, I will draw the shape and sort of say this is what I'm going to try today and so it's like every day let's see can have a different look a different face so like this is just a white face so it's uh, a lot simpler design uh, where uh, the whole muzzle isn't filled out the eyebrows are a little bit simpler here's maybe a little bit fancier design where uh, the, the cheeks have circles and like there's a, another circle under the chin so it's sort of creating a triangle shape and the the eyebrows are wavy so I've I've played with different designs and say okay so i'm going to try this design today and go it, i'll look at it take the pictures do the video and it's like make some faces do i like the way that makeup works for my face does it look masculine does it look feminine does it fit my character another consideration is um am i wearing a wig am i wearing a hat sometimes like if i'm wearing a hat or a wig it might cover more of my forehead so now you don't see you don't see the top of my eyebrows so it's like okay I know I'm gonna wear a hat so let's draw the eyebrows a little bit lower so that they are not blocked by the hat the hair the wig um, I like to do the wigs with the up styles and the back styles because I don't have long hair in real life so I'm not used to the the feeling of hair on my face so every time like the wig touches my my face I'm like oh that feels weird that's unusual um, so I go for these styles but other people go with uh, other styles of wigs that maybe have bangs or uh, down on the sides so you just sort of have to figure out when you wear the wig what parts of your face does it cover if you wear a hat what is it going to cover of your face and make sure the makeup that you're putting on isn't covered by those elements so I would say when you're getting started draw some pictures see what you like try to keep it simple so uh, the first time I did makeup they said you could use black and red as your two colors everything else will be white or flesh tone and that's again just to be keeping it simple the more colors you add the more complex your design becomes 
And yeah, as you grow with your skills, you could try adding different colors to the design. And all I, uh, my last thing is practice, practice, practice. Now, um, I didn't get my makeup perfect the first time. I made lots of mistakes. Probably the first year of doing makeup, I was only clowning around every, I don't know, five, six weeks, and then not touching the makeup again. So practice, practice, practice. Uh, if you know you have this big party you're going to do on Saturday, practice your makeup on Friday. Do a dry run through. Find out how long it's going to take you. How, lo how long do you need to get ready uh, in character and makeup and costume before you he head out the door? So the party's at noon. Maybe you have to start at 9.30 in the morning getting ready so that you can leave by 11 and you have an hour to get to your location. But yeah, you, you don't know that until you've done it a few times of how long does this take me to look this good? I can do it in 20 minutes if I have to, but I would prefer to take my time and go a little bit slower. So uh, yep. Yeah. Look at your face in the mirror, try different things, and early on, clowns would actually register their makeup design, and it was taboo to do another clown's makeup. But, you know, there is so many ways that you can make your makeup your own and different that there's no need to just copy someone else's makeup exactly the way they did it. Um, yeah, but so try something. If you like it, you don't like it, ask, ask other people what they think for suggestions and give it a try. You won't know until you try. If you can, go to a clown convention, a clown alley, find another clown who's been doing makeup for a while and get some help because videos are great but there's nothing better than a real person who could give you feedback and say, try this, let's do it, something a little different. What if we add this or outline that? And they sort of give you those real time suggestions. So yeah, so working in a uh, clown alley, which is a group of clowns with another clown at a clown convention can definitely help for those first times working with makeup for things you just can't quite get from watching a video alone. So I hope that really helped you. Look forward to uh, the rest of the week for Clown Week with more videos about clowning around. So thanks for watching and as clowns like to say, bump a nose.